Section sixty four of Poems by Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell. By Charlotte, Emily, and Anne Bronte. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Elizabeth Clatt. Three by Emily Bronte. Loud without the wind was roaring through the autumnal sky, drenching wet the cold rain pouring spoke of winter nigh. All too like that dreary eve did my exiled spirit grieve. Grieved at first, but grieved not long. Sweet, how softly sweet it came! Wild words of an ancient song, undefined, without a name. It was spring, and the skylark was singing. Those words they awakened a spell, they unlocked a deep fountain, whose springing nor absence nor distance can quell. In the gloom of a cloudy November they uttered the music of May. They kindled the perishing ember into fervour that could not decay. Awaken, o'er all my dear moorland, west wind in thy glory and pride. O oh, call me from valley and lowland to walk by the hill-torrent's side. It is swelled with the first snowy weather, The rocks they are icy and hoar, And sullenly waves the long heather, And the fern leaves are sunny no more. There are no yellow stars on the mountain, The bluebells have long died away, From the brink of the moss-bedded fountain, From the side of the wintry bray. But lovelier than cornfields all waving, in emerald and vermeil and gold, Are the heights where the north wind is raving, And the crags where I wandered of old. It was morning, the bright sun was beaming, How sweetly it brought back to me, The time when nor labour nor dreaming Broke the sleep of the happy and free. But blithely we rose as the dawn heaven Was melting to amber and blue, And swift were the wings to our feet given, as we travelled the meadows of dew. For the moors, for the moors where the short grass like velvet beneath us should lie, for the moors, for the moors where each high pass rose sunny against the clear sky, for the moors where the linnet was trilling its song on the old granite stone, where the lark, the wild skylark, was filling every breast with delight like its own. What language can utter the feeling which rose when an exile afar? On the brow of a lonely hill kneeling, I saw the brown heath growing there. It was scattered and stunted, and told me that soon even that would be gone. It whispered, The grim walls enfold me, I have bloomed in my last summer's sun. But not the loved music whose waking makes the soul of the Swiss die away, has a spell more adored and heart-breaking than for me in that blighted heath lay. The spirit which bent neath its power, how it longed, how it burned to be free! If I could have wept in that hour, those tears had been heaven to me. Well, well, the sad minutes are moving, though loaded with trouble and pain, and sometime the loved and the loving shall meet on the mountains again. End of section 64